So, first of all, thank you for being on the podcast. You're welcome. Um, we are going to go into all kinds of different elements. So before any of that, I want to just introduce you by you telling me your Uber pitch. You've probably seen I've done this in a few. So yeah. you, in short, you got a couple of minutes. Please don't do what Rachel did of 25 minutes of intro. <laughs> <laughs> What's your Uber pitch? Oh, uh, I mean, you think I have an Uber pitch, but I don't like talking to taxi drivers. <laughs> Are you the type that gets in and be like, cool, on phone, don't yeah. talk? Yeah, I'm like the person, if I usually go in a taxi with like someone and I'm like just relying on them to be like, busy night is it? Because it's always the first thing to say, busy night, what else? Been on for long? Yeah. Oh, yeah, or people be like, what do you do for a living? I'm like, I'm busy. But I don't <laughs> You sound like you run OnlyFans or something when you just like, just talk about just it. Just not talk about it. You could do what Beck said. Beck was like, I'm going to do it as a elevator pitch. And I was like, who oh. are you introducing yourself to in elevators? Can you fucking not? Oh, it's a short the pitch. The first thing that like, raises to me is like, people fart in elevators. Like, why would you want to speak to them? That is actually his Uber pitch. Yeah. <laughs> just lets one go and it's like, that's me as a that's person. That's me, I'm done. So um, what's your Uber pitch? <laughs> if like, if you're going to force me to talk to someone, um, do I have to tell them my name? I don't really want to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is, as an intro, you might have to, oh. for the sake of the podcast, because I've not said who you are. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Hi, I'm Sarah. <laughs> I'm usually the one that being like, yay, let's go in people's DMs when they do a big lift. Um... <laughs> Um, I don't know. I did a bit of powerlifting and then I'm now doing a little bit of bodybuilding, trying to grow some muscles, getting there slowly. Um, I'm a coach, but I do that part time alongside having a corporate job, which I don't love, but pays the bills. We won't talk about that. Well, much. I don't need to talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, and I do photography, so I predominantly kind of focus around people so I do a bit of like powerlifting meets um weddings engagements they're two very different things from powerlifting meets but you know people <laughs> um but yeah I think that'll be about it that'd be your gist that would be my gist and yeah if you actually got around to talking and saying hello otherwise it'd be please be the, please please leave me the fuck alone, alone. <laughs> so obviously within that you've done numerous different things yeah. right but the I remember like I think you've posted it again recently of a bit of a transformation when you very first got into fitness. Mm. And at this point, like me, you've been doing fitness for long enough that people completely forget or don't know where yeah. you even came from. So give me a bit of background of like literally what was your first step into fitness? First step into fitness. I mean, going right, 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 right back. back. As far as back as it goes. Um, probably would be because I started dancing. Like um, I had, oh, what did I do? I was, I lived in Kent at the time. And I had school friends or whatever that were doing like disco dancing on a Wednesday or a Friday. It was like you paid two pounds. Good disco dancing. Yeah, like you had like people that did their little routines and they taught you the routines and you used to go like oh, that's horrific. Week. Yeah, it was more like a social than it was. <laughs> um, and then when we moved from Kent to Eastbourne, um, I then carried on the dancing, but I then got into like tap, ballet, modern jazz. But I was like. 40, 13, 14. So when people start those things, they're usually like three or four. Mm. So people were like, well, like, you're really old to be doing this. I was like, yeah, but I love it. Um, and like, I was probably a little bit chunky. And then I did that until I was about 18. Um, I like, I took dance all the way through to like A-level, did it, at, yeah, did it all at A-level, um, did choreography, really wanted to get into choreography. And then I had a car accident with a friend when we were 18 and then I just stopped like I had like a shift in my ribs I couldn't like take my arms over my head so I was just yeah this is the car accident we, you mentioned earlier yeah right, okay. and then um stopped dancing completely um but like throughout that time I then because I stopped dancing gave gained weight da 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 um, and then I had an issue with like food like really bad it just was not great um and then I went the other way and then came back to fitness probably when I was like 23. I must have been like 22, 20, I must have been like 22, 23. Um, my, I'd got like, I'd kind of bounced with my weight. It had gone up and down, like yo-yo at me. Um, didn't, I like, just avoided the scales and stuff, avoided photos. And then I had... Uh, got a job like a corporate job where they were like oh you get like free access to swimming or whatever right. and I was like cool I'll go and do that so I started swimming and then they were like oh you've also got corporate access to a fitness first or something so I used to go and do like 
10 minutes on the treadmill and be like, cool, I'm done. Um, <laughs> I have completed it. <laughs> literally, I'm like, yeah, this gym lark is so easy. And I used to get really annoyed with PTs coming up to me like, can you want a PT session? I was like, no, I'm, I'm good, obviously. I'm clearly crushing fitness. Did you not see the <laughs> nine minutes I just completed? <laughs> right, but on the cross trail, like living life. Um, but literally that was all I did. And then I had a girl come up to me on my birthday, um, you know, and, it, one thing went, led to another and she called me fat on my birthday. She wasn't invited. She was a piece of shit, like, being real. Uh, she was awful. Um, she was, I'm sorry, hold on. How, how did this go for, like, on your birthday that came about? Oh, yeah, literally, like, we group of us went out for my birthday um, and a friend, had, a friend had invited her and she just turned up. We weren't friends. She wasn't, she wasn't known as a very nice person. Like, mm. she was quite toxic. And I think looking back now, 10 years or so on... I'm like, you were just really insecure. Like, even to the point where someone actually messaged me and they were like, someone called you fat on your birthday. Who was that out of curiosity? And I told them and she was, they were like, oh, yeah, I remember them not being a very nice person. And I was like, yeah. But in hindsight now, I'm like, really insecure. What birthday was this? How old I you? must have been like 22. Right. 20, yeah, 22, 23. And I probably gained a bit of weight. I was in a relationship and like drinking a lot. That became a big part of that relationship. So like not doing much, not moving much. Mm -hmm. People would go like, oh, let's go for a walk. I'd be like, I'd rather not. Like, didn't move at all. Mm. I, you know, was working in contact centres and stuff, buying full sugar, like, monster or relentless drinks and, like, pots of pasta, like... But before she said anything, what was your self-image like? I hated it. Like, it would spend a lot of the time, if I was due to go out, throwing clothes on the floor and just sitting on the floor being like, this is shit. Like, yeah. or, like, have, and do, doing every diet under the sun that just wouldn't work. Like... I was a big thing about Atkins, but again, that was just yo-yo my weight up and down. Mm. I just remember just being like, yeah, full fat bacon and like pouring oil onto stuff and be like, no carbs though, yo. Like, it's, nah, honestly, like, and then, but my, like people in my family did Slimming World and it was all just very like up and down all the time. It was just no consistency to it. Like I had people, I had friends that were really fit and I was like, I just don't understand how you do it consistently all mm. the time. Like, um, but it was that comment that probably spurred me on so then I went back to doing group X because realistically that's my foundation was always in dance and choreography so then that's why I moved that was a comfortable place to go to give this a shot exactly um, and that weren't comfortable because when I went back to group X I spent a lot of the time I was really unfit so, but I just met that, it was that comment that was always in the back of my head. Like I'd, I'd literally get halfway through a class, I remember like my heart rate being at like 193 and like my lips would be blue and I'd be <laughs> being sick and then going back into the class, be like, I'm not giving up because I'm not, I'm like, I need to like sort this out. What, what was that though? Because that's something that I'm going to come back to about as just a work ethic principle, one yeah. of the things I know you for. But at that point, there's it's you've yo-yo dieted a lot yeah, a lot and you've not had a good relationship with it you even i think you said you were 14 when you just now called yourself a little bit chunky yeah. it's like self-image from a younger age through to that point that's like nearly a decade of poor self-image but poor ability to do anything about it mm -hmm. what's making you not quit this time i don't know i think i just with i think when it i don't it's really difficult but with going into group X, like I still didn't have the best relationship with food. Mm. I'd still like worked in like bank and corporate places and I was known for being like having this whatever Wednesday, I'd have like a big fat pizza and a glass of wine or whatever. Like we just refer to it as a whatever Wednesday. My food relationship was awful because then by on the Thursday I'd be like, oh, I'm not going to eat breakfast because I had a big pizza and blah, 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 blah the night before. Um, I'd... I suppose when I'd had issues with yo-yoing with food, like I knew what calories were, but I was so like in denial all the time being like, I'm either restricting what I'm eating, actually eating nothing and just mm. living on squash for two days, or I'm just going to be like, well, it doesn't matter because I'd literally be two extremes. I'd either be one or the other. It just, it wouldn't, it'd be, there'd never be a happy medium. There would, right. would be. So I suppose like what Group X then gave me was, some consistency like I'd see the same people at the same classes every week they'd be there and they're like oh you should try this one and then I just started to go to more and more and more because it was more of a social side yeah because at that time as well we're obviously moving away from going out on a Friday and Saturday Monday Tuesday 
working two jobs obviously the people that you were when you're moving into fitness you have to move away from those people mm. you don't have to you can try and just, incorporate them but it's quite hard to balance both it don't work yeah people are just like don't be so boring da, 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 da. so at like 23 we're into group x and you're starting to get some consistency what mm. happens from that point um what happened <laughs> what happened next um i moved out of like because i was living in south end at the time and then moved into like more the suburbs if you like like mm -hmm. moved over to like lee which is like 20 minutes from 15 20 minutes from south end had to move gym because it would have been silly of me to try and stay at that gym right so moved to more of like a health center so a health center love a health center <laughs> Um, but carried on the group X classes, but carried on doing more of them because there was more of them. Um, and there were bigger classes. There was more people to be kind of motivated, inspired by. Mm -hmm. um, were there people specifically that you recall being motivated or inspired by? I think so. Like there was a group of us that moved from Fitness First to Virgin, um, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. um, and it would always be like us in the corner, like we'd like really push each other all the time. We like, we do the like Les Mills programs. Yes, I know those. I love them. Like, um, and I still to this day, like have a very big heart, like space in my heart for them. But well, they're very accessible, right? And they're really a good way accessible. to make like any form of exercise entertaining. Mm -hmm. I think one of the big things that was like in the early days puts people, if we're talking about weight loss or that, like just life management, trying to get into fitness is a fucking horrible door of like, well, you turn up, I don't know what the machines mean. I turn up and you don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Like you did 10 minutes on a treadmill, yeah. probably because it's the only machine that you just press go and you're like, I don't have to think about this yeah. shit. Whereas the Les Mills stuff, I'm like, there is someone there to tell you what to do and it's just, having a giggle mm -hmm. and it's hard to feel like a tit as well because they're like you're as a group facing one person that person is your attention yeah. it's a very comfortable environment really comfortable I mean don't get me wrong there were situations in like certain classes where you get some absolute awful person like filming someone who was at the beginning of the journey or had no an issue oh disgusting I actually remember one particular class when we were at Virgin and a lady actually stopped in the middle of the class and she shouted over to the instructor who was a good friend of mine mm. um, and she was just heartbroken I just remember her being like they're filming me oh it's fucking awful and I was like what and yeah that was awful to the point where I was just like come here mm. and she was on the other side of the class and I was just like come here and she was like what and I was like no like I'll take my stuff and I'll move like mm. and I just made a point of like sitting in front of these girls and these girls just sat there like even because, yeah, but yeah, I won't stand for that. And I never, I never have. Like I mm. just, even back then, I just think everyone, it, as you say, like it's, it's accessible and it's like. It's supposed to be a comfortable environment. People are very much, there's mm. no one in that who's a fitness expert. <laughs> there's no one doing a Les Mills class who just knows their shit inside and out and is really killing it in fitness. <laughs> so like to be a dick in that environment. Yeah. I mean, you obviously get the elite trainers mm. who run the programs who are big crossfitters a yeah. lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. And that's the reason why their fitness is held so high. Um, but the people within but no, the class, yeah, no. not normally, normally the environment of people who are just trying to find their way in yeah. or just trying to maintain some degree of fitness. And they just want to be, they, you know, a lot of the time I was referring to on the drive here, actually, like a lot of the time people that go to those classes, they just want some space and social time, probably away from their kids, probably away from a situation at home. Maybe they've got a really busy job and they just want an hour or two, three, four, five of their week that they don't have to think. Mm. they can just follow the person as you say in front of them and have a good time and start talking to people and be social that's so you're now doing these classes mm -hmm. you're now getting a degree of fitness and you've got a new environment of people who are competitive and yeah like, pushing you a little bit mm -hmm. so where's it go from there um i actually then um was i'd injured my adductor i think i tore my hip flexor or i did some damage to my adductor which i just kept ignoring right and i would like I, it got to a point when I just couldn't ignore it anymore. Um, so I started like a, a Jeff Nippard program. I was always at that point, I'd started like to pour into like YouTube and watch a lot mm. of YouTube. Yeah, I was gonna say there's a jump there because Jeff Nippard is like a jump <laughs> fucking lay mills. <laughs> yeah, Les mills just doing like I'm just gonna do jazz exercise and now I'm gonna do Jeff Nippard's tra well, strength training program. Do. Um, when I look back at that now, I'm like, oh yeah, that's not normal. Like. I she suppose, took a brave jump. Yeah, well, I suppose where I'd look at stuff coming up on YouTube for Les Mills and, like, look at stuff that was coming up, because a lot of the time the Les Mills programmes would be, like, put on 
YouTube like a month in advance and mm. like, I'm such a nerd I just get so stuck into things um, and then obviously I just came across other fitness content and that was mm. like YouTubers who were bodybuilding prepping like that's how I came across like um, like Christian Guzman and Nikki Blacketter um, and people like that that were competing and oh that's a different era isn't it mm. yeah coming across that's how like when Nikki was. and Christian that's the sort of like similar time to when I got into a mm. lot of those realms they were the big influencers of that time. Mm. And YouTube media was much less saturated. Yeah. So you weren't seeing many people, but there were a few people very, very I was forward. like obsessed. Like I remember watching him like years and years and years ago, like before when, like before he started the summer shredding series that he's now so well known for. Yeah. Um, I like, remember watching his first summer shredding series and actually the one of the first times he, like it was like the third or fourth series he did when he actually opened it to the public. Yeah. To like submit photos, I actually submitted photos, Did you? and I never stuck with it because I was just so like stuck in my little rut. Mm. So yeah, I injured myself, and then was I think obviously came through Jeff like watching bits and bobs again. I'm such a nerd, so his content really like was interesting to me. Like my mum, mm. my background obviously with my mum being all in the medical field, I find that very interesting, very easy to listen to because I have the background of her knowledge, I guess, yeah. like ch talking about it and stuff. Um, so I then started to try to do that. Um, that worked really well, but my technique, I obviously didn't film and things like that back then, but my technique must have been horrific. <laughs> um, but obviously was venturing, I would take some dumbbells and stuff into a corner. I was really petrified of like the testosterone area. Like I'd even like walk around the edges of it and be like, like I can't go even near a squat rack. Which also like people might say that these days, but like the like oh God, it sounds like such an old sentence. But a decade ago in fitness, yeah, it was that. Like yeah. there weren't women in like lifting no. heavy. There were not women lifting. No. It was like a couple of. There, I remember in um, the gym I started at, there would be like the sets of dumbbells and then the women sets of dumbbells, yeah. and they just went to ten kilos, and yeah. that was just the difference. And being like that was it wasn't something that it was just in your head. That environment was very hard to get into. Literally, like. I remember even having my one of my things, and I think at this time I even said to uh, the reception staff, I'd been there about a year. I said, so like, I was like, oh, can you um, show me around the gym? Like, can, I want someone to show me the free weights. Anyway, I got this guy came up, this young guy came up, um, showed me. He was like, obviously you've been here a while. I was like, yeah, but I just do classes, so can you show me the other bits? <laughs> I even walked me around the gym, and he was like, so this is the women's only area, and it was all just like cables that even now if I looked at I wouldn't know what they did I'd be like what, <laughs> like, what is this shit it was really really weird and yeah they had like the two that like the little coloured dumbbells mm. you know the ones I mean the rubber coated coloured yeah. ones yeah. yeah and then it would be like those uh, rubber bands with the handles on that I don't know what they were meant to be for no, just, but it was just like I use them backstage yeah. <laughs> they're banging for like a yeah. couple of accessories now for pump work but yeah. they were not good for training no no um, but even he he was just like what do you want and I was like I want to know how to use a squat rack and he was like why and I was like because <laughs> what a great focus question because uh, uh, um, in body pump I can put 40 kilos on my back I can clean 40 kilos and I can put it on my back mm. but I can't I want to do more and I want to be able to weight train and he was like oh you don't want to do that here's the kettlebells so what you need to do <laughs> I was like I think I've just specifically asked you for something but okay we'll yeah. do what you're telling me and to. I was like part of me I was livid I was so angry I just remember being like maybe he doesn't know how to use a squat rack <laughs> <laughs> I think this might be a him problem <laughs> I think this is him problem um and then being obviously in the weight area I um got chatting to a guy who was a PT um, who then ended up eventually being my first powerlifting coach. He would watch me train and then he'd be like, you should think about powerlifting. And I'd be like, ha, 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 you just want some more clients. Is like, the coach I know? Yeah. Really? So yeah. he was a PT at that gym? Mm. And was he a powerlifting coach already? Uh, no, he was just a PT. Right. Um, but he would, but he would, like, he would say this to a couple of girls. He'd be like, oh, you should get into powerlifting. And I just remember it being like, oh, powerlifting is just some sport that little people compete in because I don't know what that is. I don't, I've never seen a competition well, held. Felt, like credit, like at that time, not many people knew what powerlifting no, was. So no like to idea. suggest that was pretty, pretty bold. Really bold. Yeah. So you did the training and you're making a bit of progress and he suggests powerlifting to you. Yeah. And it wasn't until like a year later that I did like at the time, 
I had um, an event I needed to lose a lot of weight for. I did Slim and World. I lost a lot of weight for it. I was doing the Group X again and blah, 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 blah. And then I kind of, after that event, I was like, oh, I've got nothing to like aim for anymore. And mm. then he put up an Instagram story like, I'm going to start properly um, coaching in powerlifting and I'm going to open five spots for um, to show people what it's about. And it's free for a month. And I was like, do you know what? After a bottle of wine, ironically, I've got nothing to lose. There is, right. So there is a <laughs> people won't know this, but I definitely know the line of, so I've had some wine <laughs> and, then, and I've set fire to like nine different things. Yeah. But you know, it's a common theme with me. So it's nothing but consistent. So, so wine has been, so what we're, what we're telling people is that the wine is the only way to improve things in your life. The catalyst. <laughs> it, is, it is the catalyst. Yeah. It's the, the maker of change. Yeah. So, because there's a there's a bit there. So what happens with is the resolution of your self image and weight train what your your body weight journey mm -hmm. before getting into powerlifting, or is that still continuing? I think by that point, like as I said, like I've. Um, oh, you're do, do, do. good. I always check the camera. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm like. I get these oh, little no. moments where I'm just like, if that's gone off, I swear to God, but it, it never go has. Home. But I always worry. Win win. Um, yeah. Uh, mm, can't think. I, did, I think by that point, I got down to a certain scale weight and I was like, cool, I want to be at a certain scale weight and that's me done. I, I'm, I was good habits of like eating and stuff by the point. Um, but, and I wasn't crying when I went to weigh-ins anymore, which is what... Do you think that aligned with the intro to the weights? I suppose so, yeah. Like, and also when I learned about powerlifting, just being, you, you competed in a weight class and I was like, cool. I don't have to worry about my scale weight anymore. Yeah, because I'm in a wider category rather than like, I'll be happy with... 70 yeah. i'm like oh i can be within this seven kilo range and yeah. that's sorted then yeah but when i joined i had no no intention of competing like nothing mm. i got heavily bullied into competing in my first competition actually yeah by rosie yeah <laughs> of course it's fucking rosie <laughs> um she'll probably was, listen to this and i was like that doesn't surprise me doesn't, yeah. <laughs> she, yeah she um yeah she really was just like but you should though because um, I started, I think, in the August, September, and I did my first meet in the February. And that's where I met you, right? Mm. Uh, okay. Yeah, I met. I think I met you. I think, I, yeah, I think I saw you. I'd heard all about you because oh, my, my coach at the time was like, "Oh, you want to watch this guy? This guy's got lots of really cool lifters, but yeah, like, maybe it's them, not him." I was like, <laughs> it's a consistent yeah, "He didn't like thing. me very much." Um, <laughs> that, that, that definitely sounds like a good way to start insulting someone. You should watch out for this guy. He's really but then you, 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 <laughs> but that's the thing; it doesn't like, subconsciously make you lift like watch out for people because you're like, "But but why are people talking about this person?" Yeah, I true. think that's my brain. I'll take though. that attention. So yeah. you go and you do your first comp. Because yeah. you get bullied to shit by Rosie. Yeah. So now we're in the door and you do your first comp. Mm. What did you have expectations or hopes or was it just turn up and do the thing? It was more, t it was, well, my thing was like turn up and do the thing. Like uh, I had a good ish day. Drop that last deadlift. <laughs> Drop that last deadlift. And then you got, someone grabbed your bar on the squat, was it? Yeah, but watching Fuck it. Fuck me, this is years ago, I remember this. Yeah. <laughs> 2020 it's only three years ago three and a half no years way ago. is that three yeah it was just before covid because i was i was due to go to national so nationals got cancelled i've been with oh no rachel was in yeah i've been with rachel for three years mm. it's definitely longer than three years then because you three were not and a bit three that three and a half it's february 2020 that's it's now mental. august okay i feel younger <laughs> from this this is <laughs> great <laughs> okay so yeah so you do the, comp, the expectations and then the day in review how do you find looking back at it now looking back at it now I really wish that I just aimed for like nine for nine, like knowing what I know now in yeah. comparison to what I knew then. You pushed quite hard. I pushed really hard. And then I, but I really like, I don't regret it. Cause I like, it was my first exposure to it. And I, you know, in hindsight, it was a good day for the most part. There was someone there that did ruin it for me. Um, but we don't have them in my life anymore. So that was um, a big learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Well, because we're going to have to cover that in passing, because obviously, well, yeah. to whatever degree you want, because you go, so you do that meet. Yeah. Uh, with that first coach. Yeah. I actually don't know the exact, my memory's not fantastic. Sorry. What's the time frame from that going forwards? Um, so, was with that coach, was due to go to nationals. I look back now and I think, Jesus Christ, I'm so glad I did not go to nationals. Why? I had a big deadlift, like, and I think was that one five seven you dropped. I was one five seven, and like, I fucking love that. I remember that. Yeah, I just I want to say, like, it's not. I didn't coach you that. I just remember the day. I remember the gym. It was the performance one in Essex. Yeah. Um, 
Legia was there. Yes, she was. Um, yeah, fucking hell. A couple hell. of other people that I still talk to now. And actually, some that. people now that have moved over into bodybuilding were oh, at really? that, that show. Show? Shoot? Do you know? Me? That lifty little garage. That lifty and little then, garage, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you go after that competition, you are going to go to nationals. I was due to go to nationals, yeah, because it was me. It was meant to be me and um, Rosie and somebody else on our team that was meant to go. And then COVID happened, what, March, April? I think it was in March. I think it was March. It was like announced for. I yeah, think. and by that time, um, I had been approached by another coach, and she tried to like swoop me, and I was just like, no, um, like I want to stay where I am. Thanks, but no thanks. Um, let's be friends instead, and then that led to that whole catalyst. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, that's how I kind of more about like started being involved in your circle I guess because obviously then we would just be in the same like places I remember when they were announcing lockdown I was in that gym when you came down and then obviously you were trying mm. to sort all the kit and stuff yeah yeah and then that's really like I guess how that happened and then I don't even know it was was it I don't know it's hard to remember this bit feels because I feels remember fuzzy. COVID like feels like it kills every time frame. Yeah. Because I remember that we had trained together because you came uh, down. Ah, it was because I obviously so I competed like I think it was like the nineteenth of February. Mm. I then ran away from my personal situation to back home to to my mum's. My mum was away, but my brother was there to look after me. Made mistake. That was a really good week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember like you'd been posting some photography bits, and I was just like. Cool, That's, like yeah. you're into lifting and photography, wicked. Like if you want to go shoot sometime, like give me a shout. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, I'm training. And I was like, I need to train too. Like I've got to train for nationals. Like yeah. we're just going to ignore this whole bat thing that's going on in China right now. Do you want to go train? I think this we went. <laughs> <laughs> I, for a second, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Some bat, bat right? Like, oh yeah. I forgot, that's, I forget that's where it came from. It's been such a long time. Um, yeah. Then we, yeah, trained with you in underground. Yeah. And I will say, I commented on your training because I remember being like, well, I, no, I didn't. I you didn't actually, was you were more really respectful. like, just what are you doing? And you were like, I'm doing banded singles oh on bench. Gosh. And I was like, why? Wow. And you were like, not really sure. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> and then left it. But you did I do remember it. seeing your training and just being like, this is. No, you did. You were really, actually, you were really, really respectful. Um, you were just like, what are you doing? And I'd be like this. And you were like, why are you doing that? And I'm like, I don't really know. And I remember you handing me out for one of these banded bench. I'm sorry, if you love banded bench, that's cool, but no. Stop it. Just stop. <laughs> um, Especially when it became near a guillotine. <laughs> it was just an accelerated guillotine, because I remember, <laughs> I think you failed one of them. Yeah, I did, yeah. And it was like 40 kilos. Oh, it was horrific. <laughs> oh, um, but I remember, it, and then oh, it was like, I had my lifters on. You were like, why are you wearing your lifters? And I was like, because I told her, been told to, and uh, I'll do what my coach tells me to. And I think that's why it's my biggest bugbear when, when people are like, what, why are you doing that? Because uh, my coach told me to. Uh, why? <laughs> Maybe ask one more question. Like, <laughs> just follow up with, uh, you should wear your shoes. Why should I wear them? Because I think it works. Just follow up with why, and you'll see where this ends. <laughs> Literally. And then, um, yeah, and I remember, as you sent to you in my session, I was like, look, I'm having issues with my bench. And I remember you've even been like, I won't, I won't say anything to you if you don't want to know. And I was like, I do want to know because I suck at this and mm. I don't understand why I suck at this. And then I think that's where we were starting to like, you were just like, maybe tweak this, do that, mm. shoes off. <laughs> I do remember like very early being like, because you were struggling with keeping your bum down and yeah. you were struggling with control of the bench. And I was like, maybe take the heels off so mm -hmm. you can get your knee knees lower. Being like, I think that makes sense. I'm like, just run it by your coach. Like, <laughs> don't even say that I've said it. I'm just like, just a suggestion. I got bollocked for that i remember i was in one of your videos as well yeah i don't think it went down well yeah. but the thing is, like as i will say like people will know of this and you'll know of this of like how hard it oh fuck i know you know about this because we've spoken about this mm -hmm. when people will message you who have a coach and they're like can you help and you're like you have a coach mm -hmm. if there's a problem tell them and if it's not getting fixed leave them yeah because people treat coaching like relationships where it's like they yeah. don't feel like they're allowed to leave mm -hmm. i'm like you can't leave it's a bad coaching experience massively like I, I, I think I, I talk about this all the time. I'm like, effectively, you're paying them to do a job. They are a member of staff for you. Mm. If you really want to look at it plain and simply, if it's not working, if someone, you were paying someone to go and get your shopping for you and they kept missing out the cheese, you'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> fuck 
fucking love cheese. <laughs> love cheese. <laughs> what a weird example. I <laughs> but I like it's the only that. thing that came to my mind. Um, and now I just can't think of like, anything else but Jamie, apparently. I love like cheese. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> um, but, yeah, um, it's, it doesn't need to be that complex. No. And no. also not every, every coaching relationship will work. Because either. I think, like, what I will say, with now knowing this story better, massive credit for him getting you into the sport. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there was, there was just a longevity where it was, like, clearly a limitation you were supposed mm. to for nationals but again I don't think I stepped on that so then you went into um, we went into COVID and we went and did some photography stuff because yep. I picked up a camera I think I'd asked you about it because yeah. I was like I just for, I'm bored in lockdown I don't have enough work to do um, so I'm going to play and you're like you want to come take photos and I was like teach me let's go um, because at this point you also do photography work yeah. and you've already done weddings yeah so you've done powerlifting you're doing powerlifting through lockdown did you train through lockdown? Uh, yeah so Probably not by this point. I think at some point um, when I was a, what's the word? Affiliated athlete. With oh, it. the ambassador thing. Yeah. That was not, not. ambassadorship. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I remember you being like, are you, are you, a, are you one of my ambassadors? Can I mm. make the most of you? Something? Because I don't mind saying, because like we're dodging some of the bullets here, yeah. um, is that this person who was, had got you to be an ambassador for them but not yeah. just to take full advantage of you yeah. works for me and I didn't know about the agreement and yeah. I was like so just to clarify are you working for me through this person and you were like I don't, don't know, know. <laughs> and I was like right so what are you what are you doing you're like I'm doing photos and stuff for them I'm like yeah. what are you getting I'm like not no, sure <laughs> no the amount of times I'd walk into the gym with no program and then be like I'm just going to add 2.5 to 5 kilos on top of last week because realistically, as mm. long as last week went to plan, that's what we should be doing. And all I would just get is abuse for that. Because what is chaos there is, and like, I will take blame for, even though it's not my fault, but I will take some blame of being fault. like, I did hire the person and then did not know what the experience was becoming. And then I was like, you need to tell them that this isn't okay. Yeah, and which was... I was doing. And then I was just getting completely gaslit and manipulated. Which and... I didn't know about for quite some time. No, you didn't. But no. it was, so you had this experience. Now, obviously... That's not great because no. you've left a coach who you kind of got a bit snaked from. Yeah. Um, what seemed like oh, a really good snaked. outcome. I got taken out to dinner. Do you want to do this for me? No, thank you. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Did I know that? I think I knew that. No. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It's been a fucking long time. I think, yeah, I think my relationship with my previous coach broke broken down. Like it wasn't great because I'd taken my shoes off in bench and I didn't made these like subtle changes and I was yeah. kind of going against what he was saying because yeah. it was working. And then that, started breaking down i think that's then reason why i then was like oh do you know what i'm going to take you up on your offer yeah because i'm not gonna have anywhere else to go right now <laughs> literally and then yeah i bought kit in covid like i bought bumpers and bar yes and yeah, i started yeah. lifting on my mom's driveway and stuff. oh i remember the driveway lifting yeah it's terrifying it's terrifying you had the trestles <laughs> yeah <laughs> I and i dropped this. that so many times <laughs> <laughs> fuck that's terrifying die so yeah. then uh, so the, this is going to be such a hard timeline to remember. And so on, someone listening is like, what happened? <laughs> this sounds so confusing. Because we then, don't so know. You it have was that a bit, you were coached time. by a piece of shit. And yeah. then the piece of shit didn't give you proper coaching. No. Coming out of COVID, yeah. are you still coached by them? Yes. Okay. And then not I long after this point. It was the second lockdown that I had to. Yeah. Because of what happened. So. Which we can cover because I've just done the last yeah, episode. Your, your episode, by the way, is going out in like three days. Wow. So this one's a quicker turnaround because okay. I've got one prep that's going on later because I was like, no, I like yours. It, um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the episode I've just spoken about, yeah. I then get cancelled. Yes. And this person who works for me doesn't work for me anymore. No. Has their own thing. No. And you cut ties very soon after. Um, so oh, I don't know if we can talk about this. So obviously... I knew you, we were friends. You knew, like, you were just like, this way this person's treating you is not great. And I was like, no, I'm just going like, to make it more professional, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So it was just like cutting that down. And then I went to do some work in the gym and I got like the cold shoulder. Um, I was like, what's going on? And I just got the, oh, you'll know about in a few days. And I was like, what do you mean in a few days? And mm. then um, I was going to dinner with a couple of girls on the team and then their plot all came out across yeah. the dinner table and I was like uh I remember ringing a friend on the way home and I was like I don't know what the fuck to do like I I don't know what the right thing is I don't know what the wrong thing is I just I, I just I just had like a block mm. and then I remember speaking to Rosie 
and I was like, I'm not doing. She was like, come off social media, just come off. Yeah, step away for a step bit. Step away, and then it all kicked off. And, and then, then I, it went fucking crazy. Then it went all. Um, and but the day it happened, I actually couldn't hold myself back. I then because I, I, she was just sending me everything, like so I was knowing what was going on. I remember that night um, going back on Instagram, and obviously the team of people that I used to be a part of before I moved over were then posting and trying to like capitalize on it mm. and I fell out with all of them and um, was like this isn't acceptable like you need to stop take your post down um and then I made a point of being like you, people can't talk about things that they they have no right to like a mm. lot of this even what I'm seeing at that point because obviously we were friends uh, some of the people that were trying me in I was like you from David he's never met that person <laughs> and I've seen pages of voice notes from that person to him and him being like Okay. Oh yeah, that one. <laughs> oh yeah. What was that? That one was. Do you remember that time we drove and met up during COVID? And I was like, look at all these messages. Didn't you want to? You needed to borrow a a, a lens. It's a lens you lent to, me. Yeah. Yeah. And then I remember just being like, what do you? What do I do with this? Because she won't leave me alone. Because at the time we were both single, we were both. I was like, what's your dating like? Fuck ups in COVID. Well, I've I was got like, one. I'm literally <laughs> being harassed by someone. Literally. Um, um. But yeah, I remember that. And then I remember ringing you and being like tell me what's happened like tell me your side because all I've got from my coach is he don't like her very much <laughs> well, all I've got all I've got all I've got like my coach is saying to me I'll talk to you in the next 48 hours I'm obviously very busy when people are now like messaging me and I'm like hang on a minute like what and then so I rang you and I'm like right give me your side of the ver like your side of events yeah tell me honestly and let me pick this apart. You did. I was like, cool. That's mm. what makes sense in my brain. That's what I know. And then she was like, just being obtrusive, obnoxious, try very manipulative, adding me into this big group chat where they're all talking about it. And I was just like, this is wrong. Like, yeah. this isn't right. And then, so yeah, I then decided to actually, what, be a spy? Well, to be fair, <laughs> you were like, um, so we, we were talking about it and I'd been incredibly open with you and being yeah. like, here's everything you need to know, you can have my phone for yeah. all I care. Go, go yeah, through yeah, yeah. everything. And we've diverged off your story. We're coming back no, to the story. Right. We won't spend too long on this. No. But um, you were very much like, well, they've added me to where they're planning everything they're doing. Yeah. You want to know what's going on? And mm -hmm. I was like, probably helps because I'm talking to a lawyer. <laughs> um, so that's kind of where they fucked themselves up because you were like, this is fun. <laughs> this is what's happening. <laughs> um, so, but... But, so this whole bit, like we've we've covered the episode of my life, but yeah. the, for your sake, you now have a very very confusing place in fitness. Really confusing. Because your life of well, I've come to I've come from fucking Les Mills. Yeah. I've come through strength training. I've done my first meet. I was supposed to go to nationals. Then the fucking country's collapsed. Mm -hmm. And then it's oh well, my social circle where I'm feeling strong and somewhat empowered, messily with whatever's really going on with her. Yeah. But is now falling apart as well. Yeah, and you can't. Like, how are you meant to have a coach if you don't trust them? So I would literally just do my plan and then like leave it as that. And I was like, I just, I need some form of training because at that time I was, I'd left my ex relationship mm -hmm. and I'd moved part, I'd moved county. I'd like, moved back home with my mum in COVID just to like have some sanity and some safety. And then, yeah, everything just fell out. Like just fell down around me everywhere. Like mm. my training like the like my training was going well, but my social circle within training had gone to shit. Literally, I just had Rosie and then you. It was on fire. It like was everything else was gone. Yeah, it was like a big trash pan. It was awful. I but. think you were the only person through that. You and James Farrow. Mm. And Legia, but I didn't see Legia because she was in another country. And like Rach. the only people. I remember, yeah. obviously, I knew about Rach, but you didn't even tell me Rachel's name for like months. I was like, I yeah, I was well, like, protected. everything's on fire and I'm not putting her in the firing line. No. I was like, I'm just not going to tell you who she is. I remember having to be like, tell me her name so then I can talk to her about how you are. Yeah, yeah. I need to make sure that she's okay too because if she mm. means something to you, then she means something to me. Like, mm. that's it. So we had that whole escapade. Now, that side is like six months long. So let's yeah. talk strictly about your what happens with you and fitness. Uh, I think, yeah, so... I, after lockdown, I would, I'd borrowed a couple of bits, like some wrist straps and some like baby biscuits or whatever. And I remember like, sorry, can, for the people, baby biscuits. Yeah, like the long 1.25. <laughs> because baby, baby biscuits. biscuits, they're like, she's got a plate, some crackers. Yeah. <laughs> some, you know, some box of cookies. Um, no, like, you know, 
well, baby biscuits, like 1.25s, <laughs> 1. 1.9. No? Yeah, I know yeah. <laughs> But I'd borrowed some because my bench was still dog shit. I mean, I broke a PB on the driveway. I finally benched 60 mm. kilos, but then benched it for free because I was anyone that would care. I couldn't get past 57. Um, and then, yeah, I benched it for three on, like for a trip or something in COVID. And then um, took them back because I was being like harassed, like, oh, meet this person halfway and meet. I was like, no, I don't want you knowing where I live. I don't, like, I was trying oh, to keep yeah. that without being rude. I was trying to like keep that away. Like just yeah. keep, but because if you think didn't feel safe, I was like, I just don't want to compromise how I feel. So yeah. like, I just want to stay incognito. Um, you can know that I live in Eastbourne, but that is it. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, I drove up, dumped them on the reception desk. And I was like, see you later, motherfucker. Um, posted a story like ripping the badge off of my belt. I and remember then that. De- yeah, devoured all ties from there. Um, and that's it. Book closed. And then what happens with powerlifting for you after that? Um, I think we did some stuff together, didn't we? Mm-hmm. We were like, you were just like questioning whether you wanted to do coaching. And I was like, you fucking should. Like, <laughs> I was like well, not many people are hiring right now. <laughs> I'm like, Fuck, just keep going. Um, so yeah, we did some stuff. And then I think in like January 21, when I moved to my new house, I was like, I'm just going to park powerlifting for a bit just because I think all of that just felt really toxic. And I was mm. like, you know, I don't need to be coached or be in powerlifting to have you in my circle. Mm. And that, that's okay. Yeah. Because um, at this point, so I remember, I, I, t- I don't know what time frame that is that I actually took on programming for your powerlifting. And then, because I literally cannot remember how long Yeah, I think we were doing some bits and then I told some people to come to you and then you were doing some bits for them. Yeah. And I was just like cool, we're on a roll with that now. Like, yeah, we're, we're building it. We're, 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 we're fine, we're fine. And then, yeah, anyone that I'd kind of bump into, obviously being a new gym of arts, I was like, you need to get to this guy. Um, <laughs> but your transition to, because initially you didn't go like, I'm done powerlifting, I'm going bodybuilding. You went, I'm going to change up training for a bit. Yeah. Because we were still like programming you with mostly SD, no, not much bench work. That took a big cut off. Yeah, I think we basically, so we did that. And then I think in the January 21, I was just like, okay, I've drunk a lot of wine over lockdown. Like I made some good decisions, <laughs> but don't get me wrong. But also just not comfy in my skin. And mm-hmm. I was still very conscious of the whole bodybuilding space. I was still very, very interested in it. Still, that's still like, I was still really nosy. And mm. I was kind of, getting into like people that were in that space and just listening to what they had to say and I was like I think I can I think you know I just want to clean up and sort myself out so I'd bumped into um I'd speaking to a a PT um in Eastbourne at the time he was then going fully online we chatted like he was in um the gym that I'd been out of in Eastbourne in, in Boss um and yeah decided I was just like right well sign me up so and then yeah I think for five six months four or five six months I've just kind of wasted his time I was just like yeah I had, had that mindset of like I train so therefore I can eat and I still had that really naff relationship yeah. with food um and I was just yeah I went fully over with him and still did like bits and but I'm still like adamant that I wanted to barbell bench barbell bench and deadlift and squat and I was like that's what I, I must have done his head in <laughs> like, oh, I feel so sorry for him now but then yeah I, I was just like no I'm just gonna do the thing so then I did a photo shoot and yeah eight weeks out from a photo shoot I was like I'm gonna do a photo shoot and he was like what I was like yeah no I'm not in an optimal position to start right now but if I don't do it then I'm never gonna do it so yeah I then threw myself into photo shoot prep which is not advisable <laughs> don't do that <laughs> um but fun I think it really taught me a lot about myself mm. I went from like 80 kilos down to like 68 or something um in eight weeks that's um, quite substantial yeah like all naturally like just hard work a lot of hard work and it taught me a lot about myself like what I valued what I didn't what actually what I was capable of what my mm. work ethic well I knew I had a good work ethic because my mum has a good work ethic but yeah, that taught me more. So, I and think. then so you do the photo shoot because mm-hmm. I remember some of this. And then yeah. you did what was the move to do a show? So I reversed out of my photo shoot. Not great. Don't yeah, just just do as you're told after a photo <laughs> shoot. You're flipping sensitive. 
Um, I hope some of my clients listen to this and be like, please just do the thing. It's worth it. Um, <laughs> please listen. Please, please do the thing. Um, and then what else? So I then was back into training, blah, blah, blah. But I just, I think I've had, by the point of end of my prep, I was like, ah, oh, I've got unfinished business, I think. I was just like, oh, I want to go back. So I came back to you as program only, stayed mm. with him for some food, like nutrition Yeah, he ran your nutrition, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, I came back with you. And then we worked together from, what, the September to the April. I said to you, I will do six months. You were like, Sarah, you need to do six months. I was like, I'll promise I'll do six months. Oh, yeah, because you were like, I want to do this again. I was like, look, if you do one, you have to pick. Yeah. Because it was very much, but it was also very evident. And you even made the point because the bit you're going to say, like, because you were like, it's, I've always wanted to tick this off. Yeah. But so even at the beginning, I was like, I don't mind saying yes to coaching you, but you have to stick to it for at least a little while to <laughs> do something with it. Like, yeah, yeah, because it was like, and to be fair to you, it was just like, it was a bugbear that you're like, I don't want to do that though. No, but I can do this now. If I could do that at some point. Yeah. And that is the hardest thing for a lot of people, especially when within the world of strength and physique, where they're side by side and you're like, I want to bulk, I want to cut, I want to bulk, I want to mm. get strong, I want to get lean, like I want to build muscle. It's really hard it's, you've got to, pick to navigate. Something. You've got to literally just be like, this bit first, mm. then this bit. Like, you have to make a goal. Like, you have to make a timeline of, like, right, we're going to spend time on this bit. Yeah. And then, yeah. So we agreed. You did that time. I did. Sounds like prison sentence. Oh, no. <laughs> well, it was. No, it wasn't. It was great. And then I, I remember it. you were like, right, I did the time I said I'd do. I'm, I have a thing I want to do. Yeah. I, do, I was like, uh, I did my first photo shoot and I was just like, I'm going to do this better next time. I'm going to be better next time. Like the first, your first like diet, proper, proper, proper diet, you never get the desired effect you're after. It's always like the second, third. You you get, every every time you do it, you get better at doing yeah. it, but also your body is in a better state to start well, it. Well, baseline. So like even yeah. um, when you talk about the types of fat that you're holding, the mm. bit that goes last, well, the, the first time you do it, you had more of that to start with. The next time you do it, that fat that you didn't build back up is lower. So yeah. you get a bit of a better outcome. 100%. So... I was like, I can do that better. So, and that's, I think, my problem. I say my problem. People probably don't think that about me, but I think that about me. I'm like, my problem is, I'm always like, I can do better though. Like, I can do that better. Mm. Um, don't worry, I have that on here. <laughs> <laughs> Circled and everything. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was like, right, I'm gonna, I did, I know I got the numbers I wanted, realistic. I didn't, I didn't get that my- that last deadlift? I didn't get that deadlift. Which like the week before you, not the week before, the block before you tripled like, 175 was 175 mm -hmm. and then the one at you that it was just the wrong day it was the wrong day like everything else led up really nicely and it just wasn't that day no and I knew as well like it, I eventually got that 180 like a few months or so a year later a year later yeah it's a few months, <laughs> a few months. <laughs> yeah everything's a few months if you refuse to say years yeah. um what yeah no it was less than a year later mm. it was less than a year later but it was always within you but yeah. you regardless you hit the numbers within that realm that you wanted to hit yeah and you were clearly capable of all the numbers you wanted I to hit i still outscored some men in that gym it was great <laughs> <laughs> just proof so, my point what then happened um yeah and then i was like right i'm gonna do another photo shoot so i booked another photo shoot um started to prep and then realized that fatigue in prep with a barbell is flipping real like mm. and this is the thing where people like don't take like people talk about weight classes and cutting for weight classes all the time and i'm like just don't because fatigue is real with a barbell like it's hard like mm. you, you with you, the benefit of like machines and cables and stuff you've got a lot of support there yeah but with, it's i i remember getting off barbell squats and then going into leg press and just being like ah. Oh, Oh, like mm. I just can't can't do this so I had to take them out and make them like machine squats yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not happy about it but it happened no, it happened but yeah um, I went in and I was prepping for my next photo shoot um, but a couple of people on our team were also prepping for their first photo shoot and we got together you're doing that thing again. It's so sore, man. <laughs> My neck is fucked. Is <laughs> For anyone who's only listening, I keep, like, you. Oh, if you watch the video, I sit here and I move my neck 400 times in an episode <laughs> and I can't not and I'm trying so hard to make it crack so it'll shut up. Just do it. Satisfy anyway, the crack. It won't go. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I look fucking nuts and I'm sat here like I'm Frankenstein just adjusting my skull. <laughs> so, but you, so you have a photo shoot coming up? Yeah, and obviously got together with some of the people that was their first shoot, blah, blah. Um... And I just remember being like, I'm not that excited. Mm. And it was really like, I was really gutted. And um, 
I think a conversation had happened like on the day. I think um, we had someone doing some videography for us and Tara even said, oh, it won't be a matter of if, it'll be when like Sarah competes. Like she's always like, so I'd always do like weird bodybuilder poses sometimes within my check-in photos and sometimes I'd send them and some, a lot of the time I wouldn't. Mm. And um, I remember getting home and a girl that I had competed with in powerlifting in 2020 was doing the show in St Albans for PCA. Did I know that? And might be. Uh, her name is Georgia. She does. She competes now. Georgia R. Uh, Maybe. Uh, can't remember her name. I know who you mean. She does yeah. like pageants and stuff. Yeah. She's lovely. Yeah. Um, and she yeah, she was doing uh, a show in St Albans, and I was like, if she can do it, I can do it. So I was like. I'm six and a half weeks out at that point and I'm nowhere near the start of where I should be six and a half weeks out from a show mm. and I thought I rang Rosie as you do um, and she was like do it she's like you, you only miss you to do it she was like you only miss the opportunities you don't take so I was like do you know what I think I can do this I've got a dancing background I think I can learn to pose I think with the right support around me I think I can do this so I spoke to my other half who wasn't really that impressed with it about it at the time. Um, and, but everyone supported me. Like, he mm. supported me, she did. I rang Tar, he was like, okay. <laughs> I just remember the like, tone on his voice being like, yeah, let's go. So, um, got myself some posing lessons booked in and just did it all. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Ever done. I did like, it's like two hours of cardio a day, not a lot of food. And to clarify to people, because uh, I will definitely with that, but just as a caveat, you did it way too fast that you would suggest to anyone else. Like yeah. you went, I've got a matter of weeks, mm -mm. two hours of cardio a day and calories died because yeah. you gave su you gave yourself no time at all. Literally no time. Which I'm not going to say you shouldn't have done by no means because you did the thing and it was a very good, ca catalyst is a good word for you. Yeah. Um, but like, we, I wouldn't advocate no. that time frame because that's fucking far. No, I, I wouldn't. And like, I think the benefit was that I'd been working with Tar for, by that point for like 18 months. Mm. So he knew me, he knew my work ethic, he knew what, how, what my body could cope with. Like, you know, you wouldn't, even if you'd been working with an athlete for like 18 months and they had like GI issues, would you do that six months out? Probably not. <laughs> um, but because everything for me was quite good, um, I proved I'd done it in eight weeks before, but I still needed to pull off a good amount more mm. in six. Um, yeah, it was a lot of work, but it was, yeah, it was the best thing I think I've done. I think it really proved how, how if I wanted something, I could work for it. Mm. And like, it just had to, it was just a mindset thing. I learned times out of 10. I watched a lot of people compete online on Instagram being like crying on the stairs and like crying on their story. I was just like, it's not that well, deep. That, like you've chosen to, to do this. You were relatively quiet about it. Yeah, I did it all incognito. Like mm. people had people like you that like and my close circle that I trusted, but everyone else I was like, no, I don't, I don't want an opinion. I don't want you to tell me I can't do this. And I think it was a big thing to validate the point you were making of being like, I want to do this because I want to do mm -hmm. this. It's not for anything else. And then like to do it quietly was like, okay, fair. You genuinely just want this for you. Yeah. So that was a huge thing. Yeah. So, but before you started that prep, we were either on the phone or met, I think we were on the phone and you were like, I had this bug to do this. Mm. I just want to do one show. Mm. I've just got to do one show. Just one. I have the quote here. I'll just do one show. <laughs> um, so how's prep? <laughs> so Great. what was the change from this is the, the thing that I knew I wanted to do at some point to this is the thing I'm going to do? I don't know. I think I got on stage. I loved it. I did well. I didn't do a first time a show, which is now quite common. There's nothing wrong with doing a first time a show at all. I think they're really well placed within the bodybuilding space. They didn't mm. used to exist. They now do. I think it gives people a very good, safe environment as mm. a first time to go and compete. Um, you know, i.e. you're not probably going to get people picking apart your posing and stuff. Whereas mm. if you go and pose next to a seasoned athlete, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Like, you know, not always, mm. but you're more likely to. When the first time I showed, they, they're going to look relatively all the same, really. Yeah. I mean, the level of first timers is really, really coming out of itself now. It's crazy. Like, I think within the day, because I was there to watch you, yeah. the only person that stood out or I was like, you're learning, was a dude who, uh, on his one, who was, oh, is that one on yours? 
there's a guy who's soaked in sweat. And yes. like, and I mean like, it was just one of those moments where I was like, you just didn't get your timing of whatever you took before stage, right? Because yeah. you don't look okay. Um, but otherwise, like, it was a standard of people who looked like they had prepped. Yeah. And if you told most people, like, novices who don't know much about the field, they'd have been like, this is just a show. Yeah. So the standards, like, it's not like in powerlifting, you go to a mock meet and it's like brand new people in their yeah. PE kit. Like, it was actually... Yeah, because it was all, I mean, I don't believe, I mean, I know now, like looking back on who I competed against on my first show, Mm. they were all seasoned athletes. It was none of their, none of them was their first time, their Mm. first season. It was only, it was me. I was the only, Mm. um, and I came third out of 10. So I was pretty pleased with that one. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that was really nice. It was just a nice feeling to be like, oh, I, I did that. And then I held my own against girls that have been competing a long time, like, so when the goal was to do the thing, what did the goal shift to? I don't know. I then went on holiday and I was like, I really like this. I'm going to go and do British finals. I got invited to British finals. I had no expectation for it. Mm. Um, I just wanted to go and do it. I just thought like, cool, I've been invited. I'm just going to go do it. I had no expectation of placing at all. Um, I know who I'm going to be up against at British finals. Like, I aspire to be like some of them girls. Like, I get to talk to them now and I'm like, <laughs> I love you. Um, but... Um, I came back and I was like, oh, there's another, like, another federation putting a show on in Essex. I'm going to go do that. And again, just popped in 24 hours before the show, put up my application, went and did it. Came second out of six or seven, I think it was, which was, again, really cool. Like, to place twice in my first uh, season, especially against, I, it's not like I came second out of two. Yeah. Um, so I was like, Oh, I'm pleased with that. Um, I'm buzzing with that. So then I went to British finals and then, yeah, got. I think I just got the bug for it. I didn't play British finals. Like, I didn't expect to. I really messed up as well. I moved when they told me not to move. And Yeah, great, don't do that. <laughs> um, so, but it was just stage experience and I think it just went back to dancing for me. I was just like, oh, I love this. Mm. I'm a big believer in, like, you usually go back to what you liked as a child, as an adult. Like, you eventually find your way back, like... But yeah, being on stage, it was just like really natural to me. I love it. So I was like, yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. So now within that space, what's the goal? Um, potentially compete next year. Um, at the moment, it's just for me growing. So like the category I compete in is wellness. So it's a more lower body dominant of bikini. So bikini, you, you're always looking at like an X frame in like a bikini category, but you want to be lower body dominant. So it's more glutes, more quads, more legs legs booty um so yeah and for me coming from a powerlifting background that makes sense because you squat and bench all that bloody time (laughs) um and knowing a lot of girls within that category they some of them come from either a crossfit or a powerlifting background um the girl that recently turned pro and got her olympia qualification which is like top end bodybuilding show um was a powerlifter so um it's it's a thing i think it it makes sense so it's just nice um and some you know some of the girls you compete with or are in the same class as you they're just really supportive and lovely and it's a really nice community it's very different to what i thought it would ever be i thought it'd be really bitchy but it's really not they're really supportive i don't know what's the goal (laughs) don't know don't really have one um it's i think it's really weird Mm. I, I think people's expectations are like, oh, I want to go pro. I want to do this. I, I'm cool. If that ever happened? Wicked. Like, be a pro athlete in a federate? Awesome. But Because what I think is interesting is that you went from, so st- st- specifically had the goal, I'm yeah. going to compete. I'm yeah. going to do the thing. Yeah. And then did the thing, which ticks that massive box off. Didn't strictly have what the next thing will be, but like floated into a few of them. Yeah. And a very similar time frame, you go, I'm going to coach oh yeah so <laughs> so <laughs> <Did> that <laughs> was the do you think there was something to be said for like the movement away from having a strict goal is because there was a passion still within that space that was to help other people lead that as opposed to just it being about your journey because I you don't seem to know what you want to do <laughs> no i just i'm just loving life i think like um i in terms of like coaching and stuff i was doing that a few years ago really just more towards lifestyle but that was really because I wanted to help people have a better relationship with food and movement than Mm. I ever had. And when I found that it wasn't, didn't have to be toxic diet culture, it could actually just be, you can just live your life and achieve your goals, but you just have to have an expectation around time. 
and actually understanding what food is broken into, how you can move that around training, da 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 da. Um, and teaching people like, yeah. And then it's moved into because I've done shoots and, and shows. Um, and then Tar took me on as a female coach for like his brand and then growing the community that way and now putting girls through photo shoot prep mm. and having that experience to do it. Um, that's cool. And it's never something I would, I even expected to do. I remember when he was like, do you want to come be a coach for me? And I was just like, yeah, cool. I didn't expect people to like do shoots and stuff. That's wicked. Like it's awesome. But I think for me, like the physical transformation is is awesome. It is epic and it's, you know, amazing. But it's more so the mindset for me. It's more that, like I had a lovely voice note from one of my girls yesterday and she was just like, I look back at me this time last year versus now and I'm just so comfortable who I am, in like who I am, not just what I look like, but actually my decisions, my behaviour, my mindset, my attitude, like everything. I'm like, honestly, I was just like, mate, who's cutting onions? I can't cope with this one. <laughs> um... But yeah, like, and that just uh, gives me so much fulfillment that I can help girls sort that out before, like, late, way before that I had to. Like, these girls are in their early 20s, and it mm. took me until I was in my late 20s to kind of sort that out. And that means they can have more of their life living with a lot more fulfillment than having more of their life taken up by that toxic crap. Like, do you know, that's for me, that's, that's, that's always a goal, which is really help people and, like, make it very clear that. You don't, you don't have to be stuck in eating chicken and rice for the rest of your life just because you tell yourself you're on a diet if you're not a vegan. Do right, you know what I mean? Like, I think yeah. that was one of the things, because one of the bits I had was like specifically for you that I, I kind of knew some of the answers and cheated. But what the, <laughs> <a> ethos, <laughs> what the ethos and value was going to be for you, like what yeah. it is that you want to achieve now. And in more being like up, upholding that, very early days bit mm. that you learn because like the person who had the yo-yo diets the person who was at the slimming world and atkins and then going into uh les mills stuff and trying to figure it out to like the the fitness space isn't as doesn't have to be as scary for women now as it mm -hmm. was before no. the information there's now way more to it we came into the youtube realm of being like this fuck all here so i'll listen to nikki blacketta who is still a moron yeah, like she is, lovely, but she's yeah. a moron um <laughs> and then you came into a jeff nippard program but the available information now is far like super yeah. it's what his baseline was even then yeah um and then the information you're able to provide of lifestyle and dieting, which is, I think that's still somewhat infancy compared to like, I mean, if you look at America, a little bit better, but in the UK, actual what, if you say lifestyle coaching, everyone's like, oh, what do you do? Yeah. <laughs> do you write to-do lists every yeah. day? <laughs> um, people don't know what that is still. And no. that's still something that's growing and developing. And yeah. so like the ability to open the door for other people is somewhat easier because you have that crap experience yeah um but like the the experience of what that journey looks like and how to simplify it and shorten it and mm -hmm. that very much and that i relate to of like it doesn't have to have been a good journey for you for it to now be really valuable to teach someone a good journey no. of like you can do those shortcuts which is nice yeah. so the ethos and value and the thing you want to achieve what is it um that you would say in short that you are wanting to provide for other people in short like just a st I suppose what I'm about is just providing a safe space. Like people can talk to me and ask me about anything without fear of like judgment. Like it, and, and know that it just what what you can't do anything wrong. Like you learn from each slip up. It's about moving forward, but it's providing that kind of safe space of like no judgment, of collaboration to work with somebody to help them to get from A to B. Not mm. everyone's the same. Not everyone goes through the same stuff. Not everyone has the same circumstances. But it's just about providing them, like, just that safe space to be able to understand that they need, they can go through whatever that is and they can still have the outcome. It's just expect time, just expectations and time is a big one. Expect time. Expect time. Expect time. <laughs> expect time. I don't think that time. even make any sense, but like, I guess, yes, yeah, it's, it's my ethos is just, you You don't have to kill yourself to get to a goal. Mm. But sometimes, yeah, you're going to have to really put your foot down and- You never have to kill yourself. Don't have to kill yourself. <laughs> that's a, meta that's a <laughs> I know what you meant, yeah. metaphor. Because one of the things I was going to ask you, um, 
Yeah, you best believe I have more prep. Um, <laughs> but because the people you work with, now when you came into coaching, like you said, you were like, I don't know who I work with. Or like, I assume they'll want to do just lifestyle stuff and changing yeah. things. But you have people who are shoots, mm -hmm. some who will be shows, mm -hmm. and some people who will just be like, just people. Yeah. How do you think, and I'll weigh in on this if I can come up with an answer myself. Yeah. I wrote the question without writing an answer. Of like, how do you think the person differs to how the goal should like what the goal should be should be because there are people who go i want to do a shoot and there are people that both of us will be like you don't and you shouldn't or people are like, i want to do a show and you're like you shouldn't and then people who will be like i just want to do lifestyle and you're like you should do a shoot yeah how do you think we differ those people i think sometimes it's about with someone that's just like i just want to lose a couple of pounds and actually you realize that the reason why they've came to you isn't to lose a couple of pounds. It's actually to gain more confidence mm. and you seeing that in them and having conversations with them to help them with their confidence, moving them more towards something like a shoot doesn't have to be a fitness shoot. In my opinion, fitness shoots, even though I have done them, I'm not, I don't always love them. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Um, the photographer we're working with in the next few weeks, I actually do really like his work, but I don't know. Um, are you allowed to yeah, say who he is? Because I don't know. We're working with Matt Marsh. He's a big fitness photographer. He's great. I really wish I'd known who that was because yeah. it's been way better to ask. Fuck it. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, um, there's not. Sometimes you realise that people have come to you for a confidence thing, and they don't realise it. They yeah. don't know it. They might know it, but they they sometimes you'll have conversations with them. You might talk to them in check in. I talk to all my girls all week. I, it's not really a day that goes past I don't hear from at least one of them um, and I love it because I know all about them and their lives and I, lo I love that um, because that also helps me make decisions like you'll get some people I'm going off a tangent but some girls that come to me and they're like oh, I need to diet and I'm like you don't you're studying <laughs> at uni you really really don't um, so or you've had surgery recently you really don't like please <laughs> please let yourself recover um, so but it's about kind of you might drip feed that in maybe next year if you thought about doing a photo shoot mm -hmm. and sometimes it's about planting the seed and letting it grow and then some people and I've talked about this before that they'll come to you and they're like I'm going to do this and this and this and usually unfortunately they're usually ones that drops out quicker yeah. and that's because they're just high on dopamine from talking about what they're going to achieve rather than actually putting the steps in to achieve the thing so I think that because one of the bits that I I wrote while you were saying that was just about why. So like the, the baseline of everything you're ever going to work with is like what someone's reason why is. Yeah. So if they're going to say like, I want to do X. I'm like, cool, but just checking why. Like what, what mm -hmm. is it that makes you want to do it? And I think one of the things that I have just distinguished is the, the danger of why when mm -hmm. it's misaligned or misproduced. So in powerlifting, the danger of why is you go do a sh um, uh, comp, you hate it and you never do it again. Yep. That's the danger. Not that dangerous. No. Um, because it's like, well, you just did a thing that was heavy. You're not probably not hurt, so it's fine. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that like as powerlifting, I have to navigate often of just trying to figure out who I want to work with based on the quality of their why. Yeah. But within bodybuilding, the much clearer misalignment of why people who end up on stage who just wanted like a validation thing but they didn't want to change of lifestyle and then that post show bit's a fucking nightmare yes all the people who come into um even dieting were really like you said that all they wanted was just a confidence they wanted a change in themselves mm -hmm. and they went i'm going to do a prep for a photo shoot that they didn't need to do no and now they're like well i feel like shit i hate dieting i'm off of it rebound lifestyle awful yeah and i think it's probably I would assume more like as I don't have to deal with that realm as much of like how much harder it is to tell someone their why like to help them figure it out yeah being like, I've yeah. got better at it yeah I now I'm like yeah I've got you know I've got particular girls that are like going to compete next year I'm like you're fucking not you need to sort your food out first mm. no like I'm gonna push it. themselves into if a you want to do place. it that's fine you uh, I will be my doors are always open my arms are always open for a cuddle but you're not I'm not putting you through it. Yeah. And I'm not putting you through it because I can diet you down for it. You can do the diet. You can do the thing. I'm not concerned about that. It's the bit after. It's the mental health. It's the relationship with food. It's the... No. Like, mm. I I love that I can have girls come to me and I can help them with their relationship with food. There are certain girls come to me, they want to do a diet phase, and I'm like, I nip it straight, literally within the first 10 days. I, I can see the red flags. Like, you've got an issue with food this is not the time we need to put you like into like a settle 
phase like into we need to find your maintenance like mm. we need to sort out why you're binging at the weekends why you're restricting during the week why you've got these bad habits that are are you using food as a crutch or using alcohol as a crutch is there something you're not talking to me about there's not always you're not always going to get people that will be open and transparent and tell you everything because they don't trust you they don't know you but sometimes a lot of the time I can just be like you're not telling me something and I can see it yeah so I can't I will support you to that big goal, but that big goal might not be next year. It might not be the year after. It might be the year after that, but we need to sort this thing out first because, and then I'll explain to them. I went for a post-show, like I, I'm very fortunate that I had a very good relationship with food by the point I prepped. And that was probably the reason why I left it as long as I did because mm. I knew it wasn't the best. And I'd seen people rebound and because I've been watching it and following it for such a long time that I mean, my first reverse weren't perfect. I don't think anyone's is, but every time you do want you to get it better and better and better right? it's probably the hardest part it's easily harder than dieting like you just want to eat everything and you have to put a lot in the freezer <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah it's it's acknowledging that it's being responsible as a coach and i think unfortunately in the space that i'm in that isn't always there that's yeah. frustrating. I think it's, it's like fair to say that there are definitely coaches who take very good advantage of people not knowing their why, or it's someone turning up. Like in, in both sports, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you like it's yeah, just yeah. much more obvious in one. But like people who come into strength training and they're like, "You're going to go do a show." You, sorry, a comp. Sh- a comp yeah. And they're like, "We're going to do a comp because I need media to yeah. post," yeah. Um, and that's all they want is people in competitions and in bodybuilding. Same. But like the, I hate those coaches, but they're not as blatantly damaging as the bodybuilding ones who are like, you're going to go to a show and like, you're fucking that person for life. Like, Mm -hmm. well, for life, for numerous years, potentially. Good amount of time, Um, So one of the things I wanted to ask though, with, it's quite clear that the value of a why for someone can be a little unclear and quite difficult. Yeah. And normally you can tell when the why is good because the work ethic completely aligns. Like, because they're just, they'll do everything. They're they're not going to complain about it so much or they'll, they'll, they'll have a hard time, whatever, but they'll do the work that's required. Your work ethic's really fucking good. Like that from you. <laughs> having, having had coached you, like I yeah. know, like I didn't ever have to be like, you've not filled in X, you've missed a day. Um, I've seen the work that you do in bodybuilding. I know that you work as hard as is needed. When it was prepped for a show, at whatever fucking rate was required of you, you got the work done. Mm-hmm. So what's your why? And don't give me the first one. Because the first why someone gives is the like, the nice answer. Uh, honestly, I think I just have a high expectation of myself. And I don't like, I don't like being that person that's like, oh, you know, I said I was going to do your thing and I didn't. Ugh. Why? Oh, that icks me out so bad. But why? Where does that come from? Because no one inherently dislikes that. It's probably a, it's probably a childhood thing. Probably. It's probably having like, like, you know, I love my dad to bits, but probably like a, a, a childhood thing with my dad being like, yeah, I'm going to do this and then didn't. So, yeah, my mum hated that. So then my mum was like really, she worked so hard. Like, all I remember as a, as a kid, like coming downstairs and she'd be like doing her books and like lectures and prep. And she did her, one of the big, th- I mean, I didn't go to university, so. <laughs> um, but she did all of that, like, with me and my young brother at the time. Like, she'd, like, go to work, take us to a childminder, go to work all day, pick us up, come home, sort us out, carry on studying until, like, one in the morning, do it all again and again and again and again. And then when she started, like, lecturing and we moved, she, if she wasn't doing that, she was lesson planning or she was moderating exams or she was doing this, that, and the other. And she was really creative. She'd always do stuff. She was always gardening. She was always... She's always busy. She always spun plates, and that's probably where I got it from. I was like, I can't sit still. And we do laugh about it all the time because she's like, oh, I've got this, isn't what it? What does she think of what you're doing? She loves it. Um, she's always interested. She's always really supportive. Um, I actually was like, I don't even know if she wants to come see my show. Like I said to her a few months ago, I was like, oh, I'll compete next year. Do you want to come? She was like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I wasn't expecting that response. Um, yeah, she loves it. Um, she's She's always like... Yeah, she she's always inquisitive about the work that I do with like my clients, my girls. I hate calling them clients. I hate it, Icky. Clients is a weird word. Isn't it? 
and it's gross i'm like no i think gosh. that's when you go into that paradigm of like if it's a service i'm like yeah but when you actually like your job like i don't feel like i'm just a service no, like it doesn't a, i don't i don't feel like, like that's like the bit where i'm like yeah t's t's and t's like fair enough should fall under that yeah. but like the actual position of it like tends to be a lot more friendly than just being like hey bank um <laughs> yeah um especially because you hear in my realms anyway you probably hear in yours like people are like oh i check in with my coach via an email and then i have an email back and then i don't oh, hear from them that. all week Ugh. Yeah, don't like that. Nah, don't like that at all. Um, because if I don't know, I don't know what's going on in their life. I can't. It, it kind of hinders me doing the thing, and I, I love who I work with. And um, they're all different, and I, they're great. Um, but the yeah, she's she loves. She's really she's always interested. She's always asking. She's always inquisitive. She's very. She makes it clear that she's very proud of like what I do, and she's always like, "Are you busy?" I'm like, "Always." But do you want a coffee? Yeah. Okay. Great. But yeah. Okay. So in the with with that being like a big driving factor of like have to do enough. Yeah. Right. Like have to feel like you don't feel like I do though. <laughs> this is where I'm gonna go. Like I know that um, I could do it better. Yeah. I could do more. I could do it. like I know this from you. I've seen this from you, and you fucking said it during this podcast. Um, of like doing more. Like where do you think the line is between? So I, I wrote down as we were talking, like consistency versus addiction. Mm. Because when it was eating habits, that's an addictive lifestyle. It's very, yeah. very difficult. Um, the Les Mills stuff, you went, you double down YouTube, head first into everything. Yeah. Um, with powerlifting, never missed a day. And with bodybuilding, you jumped into shows. Yeah. Where's the, where is the bit where you'd be like, I'll draw a line and I can take a breath? Probably this year when I'm doing some growing and lots of eating. That's yeah. that's probably my downtime. But it's, I don't. It's not even downtime because we're putting girls through shoots in a few weeks. So um, that's been that's been fun. But no, yeah, I, don't, I just I don't don't see an end to it. I just think oh, I'll just keep going. It's probably really bad, isn't it? But what would that be a bad thing? Like I I don't this know. is probably my favourite topic because I think work ethic. People are like who share my kind of work ethic because it's a it's a term that has a spectrum but like yeah. if you say work ethic to some people it's like normally just how fucking hard they'll graft for something yeah. and then most of the population who don't want to identify with that would be like that's just dangerous which may well be true depending on what your definition is so like yeah. it means your lifestyle is going to be working fucking hard a lot and finding that difficult when you don't yeah it's a bad thing if you can't maintain it or it's a bad thing if that doesn't bring you joy do you find that there are times like that's just more struggle, like more negative than it is positive? Uh, I definitely have times that I'm quite fortunate I've learned like a good balance with it. Like I get time where, I mean, I go on holiday and my team last year were like, you're on holiday, I'm not sending a check-in on purpose. And I'm like, no, can you? And they're like, no. I'm like, I've got no work to do, so I'm going to have to take it off. So that, you know, that's, it's nice that other people kind of put that in place for me. Mm. Um, but... And I don't struggle if I've got if I've got to take time off. Like Tar is really supportive, and he'll be like, "You're going on holiday. You're on holiday. Tell the girls to talk to me." And they do because we both check in. Everyone's one team. And mm. I have girls, and he. But we still cross reference. He mm. has calls. It, it it is it's just one big thing. It's not your so and so's coach, so you don't. But no, like, and they, I find. I probably last year would have found like that hard to be like, I have to work all the time. And I know you're a bit like that. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, but I am getting better at like, no, like I need to rest. I am also an athlete. So I have to think about that. That's hard. <laughs> have to weigh into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, um, I am getting better at it. Um, I'm not great at it. Sometimes I'll sit there and be like, oh, I just just can't sit around anymore like i'll be sitting an hour and i'm like oh, i need to do whatever i need to do so um within that the one thing I, like the last question i had for you and mm. i have one other afterwards just for the fun of it but <laughs> is um the there's a, there's a version of you five years from now so who's done the shows and bits yeah is there something that you would want her to have figured out something that like right now you're like this is my limitation this is what i'm not good at something that in five years you're like if she's at x i'm happy I think, regardless, I'd still like to be competing in some form of way. Like, I've never, like, just because I've moved over to, over to bodybuilding, I've never, like I said, I'm never going to do powerlifting again. Like, I went mm. and did, like, that. I picked up 
I finally picked up that 180 a couple of months ago. But like, I, as long as I'm still doing something, I'm still working for something. Because mm. I find competing regardless of like physique or strength or whatever it is, mm. is still a goal. Like it's as long as I'm still doing something that I'm being satisfied within whatever I'm doing at the time, I'm quite happy for. I would hate that if he hears me saying that I'm going to get on a powerlifting platform again. But it is what it is. Um, I don't know if, if the nature of it is like I like to compete, yeah, because it could be CrossFit. You never know. It won't. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Bodybuilding or powerlifting? Um. Yeah, just CrossFit. That's nice. That looks nice. I love. I'd like to do a bit of volley lifting. I am not a gymnast. I like I'm to do lift. Break a bone. <laughs> <laughs> Several. Um, what are the the last specific question I have for you? Unless okay. did, you, did you get any that you wanted to answer? Did I get any at all? Is the question? Sorry, people are fucking useless. They are, aren't they? You have to always prompt. We've do. covered this in one of the episodes about how Q and A boxes are just fucking nonsense. They are nonsense. Uh, oh, I got, um, <laughs> I got bodybuilding X. Fucking my question was, is is going to be, I want your since having done both sports, what yeah. was your ick for powerlifting and ick for bodybuilding? You get one for each though. Do you want to guess who sent that in? Is it clear? No. Bodybuilding X. Yeah. Who was it? Rach. Oh fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> um, so X for bodybuilding and then X for powerlifting unless you've got anything else you want to answer uh, no the other one was um, how did you meet and become friends uh, yeah we covered that one photography was probably just the catalyst of friendship it was wasn't it and, and so you was... can't fucking do that <laughs> <laughs> why are you doing that with bands why are you holding a deadlift at the top for three seconds because I dropped it <laughs> <laughs> I've still got those videos of me being like <laughs> you'd be like you did drop it I, was trying. I need those videos. Yeah, I will send them um, to you. Yeah, ick for each. Um, uh, bodybuilding coaches that refer to their clients as champ because they don't actually know their name. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a thing? That's a thing. I say champ for people who are getting competitive, but I know who they are. <laughs> yeah, there's certain, there's certain bodybuilding coaches, a sp- specific one, and they're very... They're held, hired, held with high regard because they have so many clients. Mm. They refer to their clients as champ when they don't actually know their name. <laughs> that really icks that's me a, out. That's a fair ick to not know the name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or um, bodybuilding coaches that put their clients into a category because their client wants to go into that category rather than putting them into a category that is suited for them better genetically or... Mm. Um, putting them into a federation that just like so if you were going to try out um bodybuilding for example going into what i did like the pca or or fitx they're very um they're fun environments mm. they're well-run shows um they're lovely people backstage they're supportive judges like you can speak to the judges and go look at me am i in the category i should be blah 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 um and sometimes they'll go yeah but you might cross the line to do this so do you want to do this one as well and sometimes like that person will normally win um so rather than just going straight into the mpc which is the route to the olympia which is the top end right and you'll see a lot of people just chuck their athletes straight into the mpc even though they've been probably training for 12 months prior to them competing and then they do the first show which you know sometimes those shows are very big mm. and they'll go on for a long time <laughs> there's a lot of people and they go i don't want to do that again yeah well actually they could have had a really good cool day a different Just fed wrong, yeah. with a lower people See, a lower do you know well. yeah so yeah that that aches me out and then powerlifting egg really frustrates me i talked about this earlier this week <laughs> frustrates me when people don't push themselves in like their accessories in comparison to their main lift so you'll see someone that's squatting like 130 but you see them leg extending 28 kilos i'm like there is no fucking way (laughs) but that is not (laughs) pa that is a warm-up at a push like what are you doing unless obviously you can't judge people just by watching them they might be injured they might be rehabbing they might be doing whatever you can't probably not but probably not if they're doing it week in week out and it's still a year later having programmed a lot of those movements and then i do this like for a block it'll be like rp6 rp6 and be like that weight was exactly the same every week no progression weird that you managed on your squat but not your leg extension so the next block i'll be like plus five kilos rp6 that's fucking suspicious (laughs) plus five kilos rp6 i'm like wow we've got a lot of kilos to add here haven't we you lazy fuck yeah let's put 10 (laughs) i've got a uh powerlifting ick that comes from bodybuilding right which is a 
a powerlifting ick for the trophies because the bodybuilding ones are so good. Mm. Like people who walk out with a fucking sword they're cool, aren't they? and then you go into powerlifting and they're like, what did you get? I'm like, I got a, a man on roids. Or I was like, but this is a drug free federation. I'm outing the media. <laughs> this is what happened at that, uh, the, their French one. There was a no. dude who was like, the, it was really obvious and it was hysterical to look at. But like the federa every federation that does the medals that are dog shit in powerlifting and then bodybuilding, they get swords and it makes me so angry. You get a sword if you win the overall and it, like, so you have to win your class mm. and then you go into an overall. So like bikini, for example, um, you might be in bikini tall and then you go into the bikini overall, but that bikini overall will be with the short, medium, tall, yeah. trained, whatever. So there'll be five, six girls on stage and it will be whoever fits their category the best and they'll get the sword. There's one federation, and I missed out on it, that you get a tiara and a sword. That's cool. I would have loved a tiara I just at want, any comp I've ever done. I'm going back for the tiara. I want it. But I, I would also like a tiara. I run my own comp. I'm going to add a tiara to the outcome. I'm going to win the tiara. The That's that. Male, you asked me to my goal work. I'm going to win that tiara. I'm going to bring it around and be like, put it back on the floor. <laughs> I will close the door. Um, <laughs> for, for the open, I'm going to do tiara for the men and sword for the women. <laughs> like, yes. So like, yeah, because they're bad bitches. And then the men are all princesses in our sport. They so really are. There you go. They really are. <laughs> Thank you very much for doing the podcast. That's all right. To anyone who did me. listen, all I'll ask is that you actually share this episode Please. and like tell me your best bit. I do need to pick from this episode the one bit that like will be the the little clip that I'll post. And I'm like, no! And I'm gonna be like, the, I want the tiara, and I'll just press that. I just want the crown. Just give me the crown. <laughs> Thank okay. you for doing You're this. Welcome. Thank you. Done.